Hello, I'm Shane Malach from Thrive Themes and in this video I want to give you a quick tour through our ideal personal branding homepage and show you a few tricks about how you can and should edit it in Thrive Architect for WordPress. If you're watching this on YouTube, to give you a little bit of context, we published this post on the Thrive Themes blog, this one right here, where we go through the home pages of some of the most successful personal branding sites online, including Tim Ferriss, Marie Forleo, Ramit Sethi, Gary Vaynerchuk, and others. But we don't only look at their current homepage, we also look at the evolution of those homepages over time to learn what happened over time and how did these home pages become the way they are now. And we wrap that all up into one big lesson of you know, what do these pages have in common, how have they changed over time and what can you learn if you want to build a personal branding site? What does the ideal home page look like? The result here is that all of this learning has been distilled down into a template that looks like this and that you can use with Thrive Architect. And so let's have a quick look through this page, right? We have a top section, which is a, a hero section right here. And two points here are, first of all, it's a very simple text only logo. That's one of the things we saw here that basically people have very simple logos, nothing fancy. Also a very simple navigation menu, just a small number of menu items, no drop downs, no fancy stuff. Then very important, almost all of these successful personal brands have a hero image. So, it's basically a large image of the, the person behind the brand. And then a headline and right away above the fold, we have our first call to action. So right away in your headline, you'd say what your site is about and you tell people, okay, and sign up for my free course, my free guide, my something. So right away call to action, which is a simple one step opt in form, which is what we have here. Next, we have what we call authority proof. So some logos of, you know, having been featured in the news or in on well-known websites and things like that. Then we have our featured section, which shows basically like the three most important places to go to. So here's where you would showcase maybe your podcast, maybe an about me page, maybe a get started here page, a recommended resources page, whatever will help a visitor to your homepage kind of find what they need or find what they what will help them get to know you and know your brand that will go here. Next, we have some blog posts. And again, what we learned from the analysis of all these successful websites is there are generally very few blog posts on the homepage, maybe three, sometimes none at all. And also very simple in terms of layout and design, just like a simple list of your latest blog posts. So nothing fancy, but it helps people find your latest content if that's what they came to your site for. Then we've got some social proof with testimonials and we've got some more social proof basically showing off the size of the audience and a second call to action, which is a repetition of the call to action at the top. And that is what we distilled down. This is putting all the lessons from the most successful personal branding websites online into one homepage. This is what it looks like. So next, let's have a look at how you can edit this. Here I've opened this page in Thrive Architect. And by the way, when you're using Thrive Architect, you can go to your landing page selection. You'll find it in the bonus templates. So the, at the very bottom, you have your bonus templates. And this one is called Homepage History Personal Branding. So you can load it from here. And there are a couple of points about how to edit this. The first, let's talk about this title section. We've got a hero image here. and Hero images work best when you have an isolated image. In other words, let me show you by changing the background here. If I select the background section and I change the color of the background section, you can see that this image of me here is, is basically perfectly cut out. It was shot in front of a white background, so it was easy to isolate that. And it works best with this type of image, but you might not have this type of image. So, let me show you two scenarios. So if you have such an image, so if you have an image that you can isolate or that, that you already have with a transparent background, you would have to save it as a PNG with a transparent background. And you can then change the image. That's one of the things you'll obviously want to do. You probably don't want my face on your website. So I have an example here of an isolated image and I replace this. And then the only other thing we need to do is, as you can see, because the size isn't exactly the same, we're going to adjust the size here until that's correct again 
um, and fits in here. And there you go, that would be all we need to do to get this to, to work with a new image. But what if you don't have an isolated image? Let's get rid of this here. Let's look at that. So I'll get rid of this image. And well, if I just drop in an image here, which is let's say a normal photograph of a person, then as you can see, this does not look good, right? We don't want this. And there's not much we can do here in this layout. So if you have a normal picture like this with a busy background, here's what I'd recommend to do. Instead of dropping it in this column here, I'm actually not going to use this column at all. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get rid of this column and I can readjust this here. This was less wide. So our layout is basically now the same again. I go back to this background section and I add a background image. So I will add my image here in the background section directly. As you can see, this already looks a lot better, but another typical problem with a picture like this is that it doesn't provide good contrast for the text on top of it. So here at the top, it actually looks fine with the menu and the, the logo, but here we can't really read this anymore. So we need to fix that next. And there are a couple of things we can do. The easiest thing we can do is we can put a color overlay on top of this. I'm just going to approximate a, a light blue color here like we had before and make it transparent. And this way we can have a bit of both. And this looks a bit different because the, the hero of the hero image section is now moved to the background. And that might be an effect that, that you like, it might look good, or it might be something where, no, I want more emphasis on the person here. But that's the first thing we can do, just put a semi-transparent overlay on it. The other thing we can do is we can use a gradient. And I'm going to just apply a light blue to both stops here. And I'll make the end of the gradient with my hero behind it almost entirely transparent and the far end a bit less transparent. And I could even insert an additional stop here. Again, some transparency, basically push that over a bit so that now we're revealing the hero, the person in the image, but we're still keeping the text more readable. So that's another approach to use. But I'll get rid of this again. Let me show you the third solution, which is to use a content box. So I'll drop a content box right here. And I'll just quickly make a custom content box. I'm adding some inside padding here and I'll give it a background color. I'll make it white with a bit of transparency. And then I'll just drop all of my content here inside this box. We've got our text. Oh, and also from the original, we can see here the text overflows. So this is because in the original layout, we have a negative margin on the text so that it kind of reaches over towards the image a bit more, but we can just get rid of that in this new layout. And now I select this box and I reduce the width of this entire box to move it out of the way of our hero, something like this. I'd also tweak the spacing a bit here. It doesn't look quite even yet. But in principle, this is another way to solve this problem. So these are three ways in which you can create a hero title section quite easily based on this template, no matter what kind of picture you have. As long as you have a picture that's either isolated or a picture like here where you're to one side of it, but then you can also just crop an image to make that happen. That was the most, most extensive part here. The rest is gonna be a lot quicker. So the, the logo images here are just images. You can just replace these images. Then the featured section, the most important thing here is, of course, you can click here to change the icons. You can choose from all these icons to make them relevant to whatever you're advertising. You can change the text. And importantly, if you click on the box itself, you can also see there's a hover effect here, which indicates that this is clickable. And so the idea is that clicking anywhere on this box will take you to that page of the podcast or whatever it is. And to do this, you'll find that if you click on the box itself and you go to animations and actions, you'll find that a link has already been applied. It's blank link. So here you edit, you simply insert the link of whatever you want this box to link to. And that's it. That's for the featured section. Here for the blog, we use a post grid, which will simply show your three latest blog posts. And you, know, you can also edit this if you want to show posts of a specific category or anything like that. 
but this is just a post grid. There's not really much editing you need to do here. The testimonials are custom built, so you can just replace these images, change the text with whatever you have, or you can replace them with a Thrive Ovation testimonial. And then here, again, we just have some text. We have a simple background image. You can replace that with pretty much anything. It's just a background image with an overlay and another call to action. And so these opt-in forms, of course, you would just connect them to your email marketing service. As usual, you can find separate tutorials on how to do that. And with that, you have your ideal personal branding homepage customized. So what we used to do this, simply WordPress, the Thrive Architect plugin, and the new bonus template that we just released. Let us know if you have any comments or feedback on this template and this video. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.